My mother called me in December to ask, how are you? I knew this conversation was coming, and the truth is, I was tired. Tired of pretending and waiting for something I would never get. I'm fine. I'll be okay. I found myself saying this and knowing it to be true. You see, days before this call from my mother, I had made the decision not to spend Christmas with her. There were 20 other family members there anyways. I called a delivery service an hour before their party. I gave the guy a box of the Scandinavian food that was my contribution. Pickled herring, lefse, goat cheese, and lingonberry jam. And then I called my mother to say, I'm not feeling very merry. I won't be coming after all. Oh, she said. But I told her the food's being delivered to you. Oh, she brightened. <laughs> so here we were on the phone again days later. She said, I'm worried about you. I wasn't feeling brave, but I said it anyway. I said the truth. I'm not feeling the love. I hope you don't mean me, she said. Yeah, I do. I let the silence lie there between us. For once, I didn't rush in to rescue her from her discomfort. Instead, I let the silence speak its truth. When she finally spoke, it sounded like her voice was coming from underwater. I feel like I'm losing another daughter. <sighs> you lost your daughters a long time ago. You lost us when you let dad get to us. Then my mother weeps. She only cries when we have these conversations. But I didn't know, she sobs. We've been through this before, mother. You were there, you knew. I gave it one last shot. When I was in the first grade, you came into my bedroom in the middle of the night and found dad in my bed, on me. He was crushing me. I could still feel his weight digging into my thighs. You shouted at him. He sprang up and shouted at you. You both stomped out yelling and someone slammed the door and left me alone. The two of you were screaming at each other. You didn't come back to check on me or explain to me what was going on. I can't believe I'm bothering to tell her this again. I'm done. She stayed with my dad for another 18 years. She stayed with a child molester and she remained silent. My folks had three more kids. I'll never understand how she allowed that to happen to us. But I've been in training for a long time, now learning how to become my own best mother. The training began during my teens in the Hallmark card aisle. The Mother's Day cards were a revelation to me. There were sentiments expressed that I had never conceived of. Things like, Mother, you've always been there for me. And, a mother's love knows no bounds. As I read them and shelved them, I was learning something. I didn't have one of these mothers, but I sure would like one. I usually went for the ones uh, with the blank cards in the end, you know, the ones with the pretty flowers on the front and nothing inside. I chose my words carefully. Happy Mother's Day. Love, Jeannie. I kept it simple. Years later, when I had my first child, that's when I really began to learn about motherhood. I set out to become everything my mother was not. In the process, I learned to love myself. I think the youngest part of me always paid attention when I was being a good mother. So why now? Why not go on pretending at this late date? I think it had to do with my father's passing last fall. He was 82 when he went to his grave denying me the truth. I almost couldn't believe it. I thought there might be some kind of deathbed confession to ease his soul. There was none of that. 
And when I visited his grave, I felt nothing. By Christmas, I realized there was nothing to wait for. I'm getting older. It's about time I was my own best mother. And my own best mother knows that I don't need to go where there is no love. I know where the love is. The love is where I placed it and where I get it back. I've been waiting all my life for my own best mother, and now I've found her. Happy Mother's Day, Jeannie.